Chapter 10, how global warming is also killing fish. Climate plays an important part in determining the average number of species. Charles Darwin on the origin of species. Page 136. During the last century, the average temperature of the Earth's surface and the air near the surface rose between 6 tenths and 9 tenths degrees centigrade. The temperature appears to be continuing to rise, and most scientists agree that a rise of 2 degrees would bring about catastrophic changes. Polar ice caps would melt, and sea levels would rise enough to overflow many coastlines, ports, and major cities. Page 137. The primary cause of this rise in temperature is thought to be an increase in greenhouse gases, a group of gases that warm the Earth to a temperature that makes life possible. The main greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. It is a natural process in which the gases hold in the heat in much the same way as glass does in a greenhouse. Without greenhouse gases, the planet would be too cold for most life. The problem is that since the 1800s, human beings have been steadily increasing the amount of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere through industrial activities like the burning of fossil fuels, especially coal and oil products. And that has been compounded by the cutting down of forests that we have been doing on a grand scale for centuries. When a forest is cleared, the burning that is commonly practiced or even the debris that rots emit carbon dioxide. Enough forests are cleared every year for this to have become an important source of carbon dioxide. Global warming has already had an observable impact on wild animals. One of the best known problems is the polar bear losing its habitat as Arctic ice melts. Human beings, always true to their own biological class, have studied the problems of mammals, but little attention has been paid to the impact of global warming on fish. Top of page 139. One American study showed that global warming was causing entire fish populations to move north in search of colder waters. Subarctic fish are heading toward the Arctic. Temperate water fish are moving into the subarctic. Subtropical fish are moving toward more temperate zones. And tropical fish are moving toward the subtropics. This is particularly bad news for the tropics, which has special systems such as coral reefs that are very valuable to the natural order of the oceans. People imagine warm seas to be rich in fish because the land seems to be so rich in vegetation. But the cold seas are much richer in fish than the warmer ones because fish prefer colder waters. The warming of the seas is a crisis for fish. Page 140. If the seas are warming and ice is melting, this means that the melted ice, which is fresh water, will make the seas less salty. It is known that most fish live not only in a specific temperature range, but in a specific degree of saltiness, known as the salt salinity of water. The proper salinity of water is essential to the survival of fish. It is also known that many fish take a certain change in temperature as a signal to begin reproducing. Changes in water temperature and salinity may be confusing some fish so that they have stopped reproducing. There is also some evidence that excessive carbon is being introduced into the oceans, and particularly the deep water ocean, where fish have been less exposed to change and are not as adaptable. Some research indicates that excessive carbon may slow down the growth rate in fish, and because growth correlates with egg production and the ability of fish populations to reproduce, this too bodes very badly for the deep water fish populations. Page 141. As Darwin would point out, a change in this population would impact other fish populations and spiral across the planet. 